You were Anton's secretary, Miss Gabriel? Of course. Does that seem odd, Commissioner? No, but, well, that is, I... There was, was considerable, shall we say, social secretary work. Morning, I Commissioner. Was... Oh, hi, Jim. I heard you sent for me. Uh, no, I guess you didn't. See you later, so long. Mr. Gabriel, this is Steve Mitchell, the agent I was telling you about. Steve, Miss Maria Gabriel, Pierre Anton's former secretary. Oh, glad to know you. You thought the commissioner and I wanted to be alone. Oh, well, why not? I think that's rather insolent, Mr. Mitchell. Steve. Commissioner, are you sure this is the most capable man you have? I'm positive, Miss Gabriel. At least you have somebody more polite. Thank you, Commissioner. It's a pleasure. Steve, you remember when Anton was assassinated in Paris a couple of months ago? Sure. There were two eyewitnesses, that is, to the assassination. Two persons who could identify the killer. One of these eyewitnesses was Paul Renal. Yeah, I remember. Thank you. You missed some of your ammunition. <clears throat> Last night in Paris, Renal was murdered. Uh oh, and? Miss Gabriel is the other eyewitness. Renal dead, it's imperative that she goes back to Paris. Well, why don't you let her go? Steve, it's your assignment to guard her. If you don't mind, Commissioner, I'll wait outside until you are finished. Ouch. Steve, all you've got to do is to turn her over to Inspector Murat of the Paris Surete. Then your job is finished. Go on now. We're holding a plane for you. Okay, Jim. It's important, Steve. Important to the relations between her country and ours. Take good care of her. Yeah, but with that name, who's going to take care of me? <laughs> Right, but in the rush to the airport, we missed dinner, and I've just got enough time to buy me a chocolate bar. Finally, I show her the manners she claims I don't have and offer her some. What are you going to do with a stubborn girl like that? The rest of the trip, Maria divides her time between staring out the window and throwing an occasional nasty glance my way. At present, this appears to have all the earmarks of the shortest acquaintanceship on record, and when we get to Paris, our relations haven't improved a bit. I turn her over to Inspector Murat, and he puts her in the Lafayette Hotel with a couple of his men assigned the garter. My job is finished. My softest assignment to date, I think. <laughs> I should have known better. Just when I'm ready to step out for a sample of Paris nightlife, I get a message from the inspector asking me to meet him. Nice glamorous neighborhood you got here. Bet you could get a throat cut for a buck. Okay, what's the tab? Tab? Well, on second thought, maybe you better wait. But, monsieur, how do I know you will come back? As you say. <coughs> and then where would I poor Henry be? <laughs> yeah, where would I poor Steve be? Here. You get the other half when I come back. I don't understand, monsieur. How do I know you'll wait? Hello, Mitchell. Glad to see you. Come in, please. Hello. This is Reno's room, the first eyewitness. And this is where his body fell, feet to the window. See, he was shot in the back. Does it seem to have any significance to you? Well, it just means the killer didn't take any chances. Professionals rarely do. This was seen the case when Pierre Anton was uh, assassinated. He was shot in the back, too. Well, take a look around, Mitchell. Sometimes a fresh eye sees something that an old, tired one has overlooked. <laughs> Nothing has been touched. 
Inspector, I think I'm being kidded. Oh, not at all. You see, Renault was a poor man, but an honest man. And a brave one. I ask you to come up here to see what we are up against. Mark 238. Hello? Hugo? Yes? <laughs> Your faithful servant, Baylor. <laughs> uh, Inspector Murat is across the street. And uh, Mitchell, the American agent. Guess what? <laughs> he just went in. Shall I kill him when he comes out? No, no, Belog. When he comes out, follow him. And then kill him? No, you fool. Not until he leads you to the girl. Belog. Are you there? Belog. Yes, Hugo. Belog, did you hear me? I told you to follow. Like beef goulash. Yep, beef goulash. I can smell the peppercorn. Smells good, too. Wait a minute. No kitchen. Not even a hot plate. How did he get it here? No containers. Maybe a paper one. No, not even a paper container. What do you make of that, Inspector? Well, he brought it up with him. He didn't cook it here. He didn't bring it up in that open bowl. Well. We checked up on that. Uh, Tenant told us that Renault often brought up food from this little restaurant, Hugo's, just two blocks down the street here. And Hugo himself told that he was killed uh, the same night when he bought that around midnight, you know, the same night. And uh, maybe he threw it out of the window. Nothing out there. I'm getting silly in my old age. He wouldn't have thrown it out of here. Mitchell, do you have any more problems to confuse me with? Yeah. What was Reynolds' description of the guy that shot Anton in the back? Well, he was short and fat, and he wore very thick glasses. The killer also wore a linen suit, which is very common to the people of Anton's country. You see, Mitchell, Pierre Anton attended here meetings, uh, top secret meetings about European rearmament. He represented a manufacturing combine who was going to supply munitions for the rearmament, and France needs badly ammunition. Yeah, I think I get it. You know, there's plenty of opposition in the underground to rearmament, so the underground had Anton knocked off. Now his munition manufacturers have got cold feet, huh? Exactly. But if we find the man who assassinated Pierre Anton, the manufacturing combine agreed to accept it as an evidence that Surete can and will protect them personally. And then they'll deliver the munitions, huh? Uh, that's the agreement. Of course, it's dangerous for them with the killer still at large. Well, how long have we got? We? <laughs> Your assignment is finished. I said, how long have we got? <laughs> Three days. We must find our men before the meetings end. You mean by Friday? Exactly. That's why I wanted Miss Gabriel over here, so she can positively identify our man if we find him. Now, you understand? Yeah, I understand. Three days. You know, someday I'm going to get me a case where I can relax and take a whole week. I think we better go down to Hugo's and... See how he delivers his stew. But there's one thing that bothers me. If we only knew the angle that he was shot from, it might help. 
Couldn't have been here. He fell that way. Huh? Yeah, that could work. Hey. A linen suit, short, fat, with thick glasses. Am I crazy? Come here, Inspector. Hmm. Is your cab for hire? No. I'm in a hurry. No, monsieur. Your hurry is your affair. I'm waiting for a passenger. Oh. Well, where is he going? Maybe I could ride with him. Listen, I don't know. I picked him up at the Hotel Lafayette. He may be going back. Hotel Lafayette. <laughs> Many thanks. Inspector, he's coming this way. I'm going after him. You stay here till I catch up with him. Hey, you. Just a minute. I want to talk to you. Watch out, Mitchell. He's got a knife. Are you all right? Yeah. Just got the wind squeezed out of me. That guy had an arm like a steel band. Did you see him closely? I only can see that he was a big man. No. Let's ask the cab driver. Hey, what are you doing, playing ostrich? Huh? Look, did you see a big man? What, what big man? The only man I saw was a short, fat one. Say, monsieur, you told me you, you were going to give me the other half. Yeah. Look, take us to the Surete. Huh? And then to the Lafayette Hotel, huh? We will see. Sergeant Briand, mademoiselle. Come in, Sergeant. There is no need to do that, mademoiselle. We have doubled the guard around the hotel. You are absolutely safe. Just the same, Sergeant. I'll take no unnecessary chances, if you don't mind. I suppose there is still no sign of anything suspicious. No, mademoiselle. That's what you've been telling me for the last two hours. But it is true. You wouldn't tell me if there was anything wrong. Yes? Lieutenant Pichon, from Inspector Murat. Miss Gabrielle, Inspector Murat sent me. We need you immediately for identification. You see, mademoiselle, I told you to were absolutely safe. So that will be all, Sergeant. You may go. Miss Gabrielle, will you please come with me? Would you wait outside, Lieutenant, while I change my dress, please? Of course, but please hurry, Miss Gabrielle. Hello. Will you please connect me with Sûreté? Thank you. May I speak with Inspector Murat, please? He's out? Could you tell me if there is a Lieutenant Pichon attached to the Sûreté? There isn't? But there is a Lieutenant Pichon with the police force. Thank you. I decided not to change, Lieutenant. Oh, Mademoiselle, there will be a short wait. The car hasn't arrived yet. Where's the sergeant? And the guard who is in the corridor? I dismissed them. There is no further use for them. How do you know? I haven't identified anyone yet. Oh, it is a mere formality. We know we have the right man. Open it, Miss Gabrielle.
will leave in about 10 minutes, Belok. As soon as we are sure the gendarmes are all gone. I'm going nuts. It's like they'd slipped her right out of our pockets. The man who impersonated Pichon will get him, Mitchell. From yeah. Brian's description, one of my men identified him. Yeah, but when? Chances are one to a hundred that she's alive now. I'm going to Hugo's. Hugo's? Why? Well, you don't expect me to just sit here, do you? The only lead we've got. I wish I could go with you, but I have to direct the search. I'm turning the whole Paris upside down. That's just what I'm going to do to Hugo's. Well, this assignment's turned into a real sweetheart. First they murder Renal, then they grab Maria right out from under our noses. And the nice thing is I've got so much to go on. My one lead seems to be the dead man's habit of buying food at Hugo's and bringing it up to his room. A real big help. But if you've only got one lead, no matter how flimsy, you've got to follow it up. I'm looking for Hugo. I'm Hugo. I'd like to talk to you about a man named Reynal. Yes, I've already spoken about Monsieur Reynal to the police. This is a private matter. Ah, that's different. Private matters cause me much concern. How so? They are expensive. Follow me. Would a thousand franc note bring down the overhead? I was thinking about uh, 5,000. You weren't thinking. You were dreaming. There's one. Sorry, that's all the French money I've got. In that case, monsieur, I'll be glad to fix this one. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Montmartre, 114. here. Come down here right away and wait outside. He's alone. When he leaves, you know what to do. I can't. Miss Gabrielle is here. She's there? Yeah. I decided not to kill her until I've been paid. I killed someone else for you, remember? You'll get paid, Belog. I want it now. The girl can identify you. Don't be a fool. You'll be the fool if you don't pay me. <laughs> I like to tease him. <laughs> to make him worry. But he is right. I do have to kill him. Here we are, monsieur. Now to repair the bill. Was Renal in here night before last? Oui, monsieur. He came in and bought a bowl of goulash. What time? Around midnight. The bill is repaired. A neat job, too, monsieur. Were there any witnesses? To what, monsieur? Did anyone besides you see him come in and get the stew? You don't believe me. What did he use for a container? He brought his own. Well, if he did, it isn't in his apartment. Whoever went with him shot him and took the container away. Let's see one of yours. I have no containers, monsieur. That's what you say. You goes. You've got your name on every piece in the joint. That is not unusual, monsieur, not in Paris. Maybe not. Look at that. If the killer had left that behind, where would they have looked for him, Hugo? Come on, quit stalling. Where's Maria Gabrielle? I don't know Maria Gabrielle. 
Ah, oh, but I remember a man that left here with Reynold the night he was murdered. What's his name? Belog. He may know something about this Maria Gabriel. Where do I find him? The young lady over there knows him. Do you know Belog? Oui, monsieur. Where does he live? Would you like me to show you where he lives? No, just give me the address. I do not know the address, monsieur. I would have to take you there. What does he look like? Well, he's medium height, fat, and wears thick glasses. Could I use your phone? Where is it? Through the door in the office. Turn to the right. Thank you. Take him a roundabout way. I need at least 15 minutes. I have to see Bailoff. Listen, Inspector. She knows where he lives, but she doesn't know his number. Look, you get some men over here and search this place from top to bottom, will you? Good work, Mitchell, but be careful. I'll call you as soon as I can. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. What's the trouble, monsieur? What's the idea of giving me the runaround? Hey, now, look. We've been walking for 20 minutes, sister. We're right down the street from Hugo's. What are you trying to do? Just spend a little time with you, monsieur. I like being with you. Yeah. Where's Balog's house? Two houses past the lighted window. So you didn't know this Baylog personally, huh, Hugo? Positively not, Monsieur Mitchell. Maria, did you ever see this man before? No, Mr. Mitchell. But you told me that a man came and talked to Baylog just before I got there. The man stood outside the window, and Baylog talked to him from inside. I did not see him. Ah. <laughs> You're not much help, Maria. I have to tell the truth. I'm sorry, Steve. That's all right. I suppose you'd like to go back to your hotel now. Thank you. I am a little tired. He knocked me unconscious, you know, before he went after you. Brion is waiting outside. He'll take you back to your hotel. Thank you. Goodbye, Inspector. Right. I'll see you at the door. That won't be necessary. Goodbye, Steve. Bye, Maria. Well, the case is almost closed. Miss Gabrielle recognized Belloc that he killed Pierre Anton. We can safely presume that he killed Reynold, too. Of course, we'll have to check. You'll go. Sit down. Inspector, Baylog did not kill Raynal. When Hugo here said that Raynal came here for his stew, he was telling the truth. But when he said that Baylog left with Raynal, he was not telling the truth. But there are witnesses. Raynal saw Baylog kill Anton, and he knew that he was out after him. He would have never left here with him. So you did not know Baylog personally, huh, Hugo? Let me show you something. I took that off Baylog's body. <laughs> 